I was absolutely not sure if this will look great and now I'm super surprised. Oh babe! <laughs> yeah, this looks now so much more surrealistic. Hello friends and followers and welcome back to a new project or to part two of this project. In the last week I painted this nice artwork. The first video is linked over there, so if you um, want to see it first, it makes sense. Yo friends and followers, voiceover Smo is there as well and like I promised in the last video, now we want to continue the artwork of last week on the other half of this wall so that it creates a super nice overall look. I'm so happy that there's not so much humidity in the air. You can see it over there how it's already getting dry. Flashback. Oh, holy, holy shit. The whole wall is wet. An hour later. Um, but yeah, we can't do anything. I won't paint on a wet wall. Three weeks later. <laughs> the wall is wet. Why is always on the first day the wall is so wet? An hour later. <laughs> End of flashback. I'm so happy about the paint <laughs> to get dry now. <laughs> And this is the magic. Um, this carpet protects the floor. And I always try to keep the floor as clean as possible because I don't want anyone from the city government say, oh no, everything's dirty since Smo is painting here. Um, please give us the permission back. This is why I always take a carpet with me. So, hop, hop, hop. I can roll it until to the ground and the roller does not get dirty as well. We're done! Yeah! Oh yeah! So now let's make the first lines. First thing that I do, I take a photo of this wall. Boop. And I put it in photo layers. I add another photo over it of the design that I want to paint. So this is what we want to paint. I put the opacity on 50% like this. And adjust the artwork on the wall. Save. JPEG. By using the photo layers app I can decide beforehand where I need to add some doodle grid on the wall and where it is absolutely not necessary. After that I make a second photo including the doodle grid, I repeat the process and now I have enough reference points to get enough orientation to, to find the proportions on the wall. I try to reuse the caps um, as often as possible and you can see that it was not spraying that well at the beginning but most times if there is still some paint coming through they get open again and you can work the whole day um, with the caps. Yeah, this saves money. Clouds aren't that hard to paint to be honest. In general, these are just crooked C shapes that are faded to the middle. And you just combine them randomly and suddenly you have great clouds. Oh, and the clouds start crying because <laughs> my clouds are so beautiful. <laughs> I was so happy that I was working underneath this bridge. As the first object in this painting, I wanted to paint the water tower of our hometown. 
It is such a beautiful building. Probably my most favorite building in my whole hometown. I have painted the tower already several times, but this time I wanted to paint it more far away so that its natural colors change to violet and purple between the pinky clouds. This creates such a nice depth and makes the foreground more pop. A half of a year ago I already painted a unicorn themed wall and back then I was in such a hurry that I did not finish the first sketch that I prepared and which was meant to be more surrealistic than the final result that I painted to the wall. In the last unicorn wall I went the easy way, painted comic unicorns but originally my intention was to paint something epic. And I was not that happy with the wall afterwards. But this is the best motivation to paint again. To say to yourself, this time I want to make it better. And this time I will paint surrealistic unicorns. Okay, friends and followers, um, yeah, the problem that I have recently is it is already, even if it looks on camera probably pretty light, like a normal day, but I can't, when I, when I stand here, I can't see the different colors anymore. It is so hard. So, um, because now comes the super important part, the horses. You probably already have seen that these are horses, pretty obvious. So, um, and now I will, I will continue filling all the background over here because the background is not so detailed and uh, I have to make it anyways. I, when I come back tomorrow and we have a better, uh, better light situation, I can continue with the horses. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is everything that I want to say for today and we see us tomorrow. The next morning, yeah. We have so much more light over here. I'm looking forward to paint the horses. This will be damn beautiful. Oh yeah. I will try to paint the whole horses in one day now. We'll try. Because I still got so much ideas what I want to do with the, with the horses. I'm impatient. Over the years I learned that it is the best way to paint the shadows first. So I start with the dark colors and when I'm done with the dark parts of the animal I put the lighter colors always a little bit overlapping uh, on top of it. And I do the same with the hair. I start with dark hair and put lighter colors over each other so that there's at the end the light 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 reflections. I did this moderation 10 times. I leave it like that now. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh man, I was talking so clever that I always start with the darkest color and I paint the second unicorn and I start with the lightest color. This is probably artistic chaos or something. If I can give you one really good tip, just paint the right color at the right place and it will look good at the end. One of the super clever uh, philosophy dudes from ancient Greek once said that two um, things can't be at the same place, but we will change that. These two unicorns are sticking into each other, so they are at the same place at the same time. 
because this is only possible in art. Yay! And this will cause a lot of confusion and this is great. Besides unicorns, you can find half-timbered houses in my artworks from time to time. And I decided that I want to paint such a house above the two unicorns as well. This, this part this part does not work as expected and I'm not happy with this. This does not look good enough. So I decided that I want to paint some bubbles <laughs> freestyle over there uh, just to create a little bit more three-dimensionality that there is something that makes a shadow. Yeah, we will see. I got no idea what I've done here. But it looks brilliant! <laughs> Yay! This looks brilliant! Perfect! What the heck? They look like they were like they were like chrome or something. I think I need I need one bubble more. Let me tell you a few words about the sponsor of this video. Canvi.com Like you probably know recently I'm selling a lot of prints in my online shop and this is the way how I try to make a living as an artist to fill the fridge for my kids and we all know that it is about efficiency when you want to sell something. Before I found Canvi, it took me a half of an hour to create one single mock-up for my website and it was a pain to make the artwork fit in the right size and to build the shadow and the frame by hand. This is annoying as hell. And you need a lot of knowledge about Photoshop and all this stuff. But Canvi has an incredible selection of beautiful rooms and all you need to do is to select your artwork, tell Canvi its size and it looks amazing in a glance. You can play around with different frames, you can even change colors in the rooms, you can place your artworks behind stuff. Okay, this does not make so much sense, but you can even arrange multiple of your artworks on one wall. I've never made mock-ups that fast in my whole life. So please check out the link in the video description or go directly to canvi.com slash voucher slash small and save yourself three free months of trying around with Canvi. Thank you Canvi for sponsoring this video. You need more, <laughs> you need more of these bubbles. Maybe one of them is, is flying like like here. Oh no, here we still have... Ah no, we have the chimney over here with the steam. So I will make one bubble like here. This would be a great position. Or let's call them nuggets. Wow! Now it looks like a perfect nugget. What the hell? <laughs> I'm so fascinated. Sometimes I can really surprise myself as well. Before I started to paint the nuggets, I just wanted to pretend that I have a real idea what I'm doing over there while I'm painting the nuggets. I was absolutely not sure if this will look great and now I'm super surprised. But the problem is, the next time when I'm here, maybe I, I think totally different about the nuggets. <laughs> Please write down in the comments if you like the nuggets right at this moment. Oh babe! <laughs> yeah, this looks now so much more surrealistic. Brilliant, brilliant. So, mm, ah. What's the, the, the question is what's the source of the nuggets? So maybe I make 
make a little bit of like like there is some liquid like they ah oh, yay okay we have some we have some liquid um there, there are stones okay we, we have the 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 stones which come natural stones which become a liquid which becomes a living object like it becomes the horse okay so now the nuggets make no sense anymore <laughs> maybe the nuggets should become bucks I need a black buck I don't know man it just looks cool I will paint the chimney now I think when I painted the chimney I will think totally different about the nuggets more in case of which sense they make not that they are absolutely useless let's paint the chimney oh yeah the chimney is there everybody loves the chimney Painting is a very emotional process and I just wanted to leave this in the video because <laughs> it was so funny when I was not knowing if the nuggets will look great or not. And now we slowly come to an end and while I'm painting this heart shaped <laughs> halo above um, the house, I want to say a big thanks to my patrons for helping me to make um, artworks like this possible. Okay. Friends and followers, unbelievable, I managed it, I'm done. I will show you now the final result. <laughs>